Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. That's fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Reboot your credit card with Apple Card. The credit card created by Apple. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that you can now choose to grow in a high-yield savings account that's built right into the Wallet app. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone and start growing your daily cash with savings today. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility requirements. Savings accounts provided by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again and that wind chill is killer but you're not worried about that because you shop the omni heat infinity collection it's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside no snow or chilly temps can stop you now go out anyway shop the omni heat infinity collection now at columbia.com slash infinity the holidays are a time to feel and create joy And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. at it again with another episode of the Shades of Blue Soccer Show. We are the KC Soccer Journal. Cody Bradley, Thad Bell, and David Greenwald are all here. Big win, gritty win. I love when we get to call a win gritty. Gritty win, 10-man disadvantage win. A lot of big performances. Nobody was perfect. It was was kind of a strange game. Almost everybody had mistakes that were really frustrating, but a lot of big performances. Thad, if I had you guess who fought Mob, made the man of the match. And remember, it's just statistical, it's numbers, it's without emotion. Who was who was your man of the match? On, the, on either team, who do you think foot, fought Mob, gave man of the match? Jake Davis. <laughs> okay, well, you nailed it. That was well done. Very Cheater. well done there. Did you Cheater. look that up? I, I, put this in the, <laughs> I put it in the rundown. Did you look this up beforehand? No. That did I not. I saw it yesterday, He's though. Lying. Oh, <laughs> there, it <is. laughs> there it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, Jake had a very good game. We were talking about him in the last episode. He's been. He was a topic of discussion recently. Just missed out on the p- top twenty-one players under twenty or top twenty-two under twenty-two. There we go. I think I got it that time. Wasn't officially named to that, but should have been. Yeah, we had a we had. A, a good discussion about that. That was in the Slack channel that we did, <laughs> not on the air. But I don't know. I, I Admittedly, I don't watch enough of all of these younger players. I, I don't watch them all regularly. I couldn't tell you if Jake uh, deserved to be on there, if he was more accomplished than any of those guys. But he's been playing really good. He's playing a, a new position. He's getting regular minutes. And it seems like over the last month, it seems like every game he's been getting better, Thad. He has, man. He's just he's been growing in that position. He's become the right back of choice at this point. Not that they have a lot of other choices. Since right. Caden Pierre's hamstrings are uh, apparently more fragile than some people's egos, and <laughs> Graham is just getting back out of his uh, injuries. Also, so he almost made it into the match yesterday. That's close. That's close. He got on the field when they did that celebration for the 2013 team. That was as much as I've seen Graham Zusi in like 10 years. It feels like. He was he was on this he was ready to be subbed in last night. He was. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they pulled him over. He had his jersey on. They put a penny on him just because he was standing right next to the field and then Peter decided to leave Kyrie in instead of bringing in Graham. Another great performance from Jake Davis. 
Uh, didn't actually say what he he was made of the match with an eight point four rating. So not necessarily nobody was really <laughs> lighting lighting the thing up, but uh, a, a good performance from Jake. Let's take it back to the start of the game here. Late scratch from Alan Polito, I think made my heart drop. I think made everybody's heart drop for a second. The last thing you want to see, especially after the new contract. Willie Agata comes in. David, what did you think of Willie Agata's performance? He got the goal. Uh, a classic Willie Agata goal, one that like your dad could score, anyone's dad could score if if standing well, in the right spot. But what do you think well, of his you, performance? I have not met Steve Greenwald. Um, <laughs> I don't need to. He just <laughs> he's a left-footed dynamo, but I don't think he would have put that away. Does he have function you know, of his legs? Because if so, he could have scored that. Well, he's a 73-year-old man who has two plates and nine screws in his feet. So (laughs) not a lot of mobility, but if it fell to him, I feel confident that he would probably duff it. Willie Willie had an interesting game. Willie made a lot of good runs. He popped up in a lot of good spots. And he did a lot of Dwyering. You know, Dom Dwyer was a volume-shooting striker who set a scoring record for the club because he just took chance after chance after chance. And every so often he'd put one of them away. Um, Willie missed a really nice sitter on a cutback from, I think, Kyrie. Kyrie. um, Launched it. He kind of espinosa it into the stands. Uh, But when the game was on the line, when it mattered, he buried it. He buried it. Uh, He also missed uh, what I would call a free header. And... It was right on the goal line, and somehow it went out for a corner kick off the guy that was next to him. And it was almost one of those that that it would have been harder to not head the ball on frame than than where he headed it. But I don't know. Not I, everybody I keep... has your technique, Cody. <laughs> not everybody's scoring with their head. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping that would come up in this conversation. Uh, Thad, what awesome. did you what did you think of Willie Agata? Uh, shoot. The one problem I have sometimes is when I'm shooting games, I see like a limited amount of things. And the play was a lot on the other end last night, just the way that the game yeah. went. But what I saw was I thought he did fairly decent. Not spectacular, but he did get that goal. So you get the game winner, you got to at least get some credit. I think David said it right. He pops up in a lot of good spots, and he definitely does do that. And I think that's in contrast to Alan Polito, who said we've talked a lot about how he does so much to go back into the play in the midfield and get involved that he's sometimes not in those spots where we need him to pop up. Yeah, uh, and, but, and we'll, you know Willie's going to be up there. Yeah, that's it, a good thing. It's it's good contrasting play because I do think they are they do play differently, and it almost like at the beginning of that game, it just the number of chances Willie had, it just seemed like, well, what the hell? Why don't we do this when Polito's out there? But I think that's part of it. Is this? The, the style of play is different. Willie is in the right spot. And, yeah, I was I was frustrated for some of that. But, yes, when the ball fell to him, he scored it. And they did as well. <laughs> Their goal was the biggest slop goal I have ever seen. I, Houston's? Yes. Houston's goal was absolute garbage. Two guys ran into each other and hit off his hip. No idea what was going on. Guy just stuck his boot out and it went in. They had no business scoring in this game. That really, that one really made me mad. They had an XG of 1.3. Well, 1.3 because Timmy came up big with another, with another big moment. And that is something we've talked about that this team was missing. And I'm finding a correlation there. Every time Timmy comes up with one of those big moments, Sporting Kansas City comes away with a win. And that... Uh, what was that in like the 91st minute? I think he did it. That was, uh, yeah, another another good performance from Tim. The, I was looking at the numbers there on FOTMOB, but he didn't have necessarily have the greatest rating because it, it factors in his passing, which wasn't necessarily that great. But he, he, he came up big. He's doing what we need what we need him to do back there. You know, I, I, re- I should have cut this audio out for you, but I, I didn't. Uh, but just... I recognized this last night when Peter was talking that I wanted to mention this quote to you today because somebody asked him about it and about Tim's performance in the presser. He goes, the bottom line is that's what he has to do. It's his job. <laughs> and I'm like, that sounds like, that sounds like Cody. Yeah. He's just, sta- you know, it's just there doing his he's job. He's just standing man. there doing his job, right? Just block it when it comes to you. I don't know. It seems easy. 
<laughs> but, you know, I, I think this goes to the conversation we were having a lot at the beginning of the season when we were debating McIntosh, Poole's camp, you know, well, Mealy was out. The reality is neither of them are on Tim's level. And McIntosh is, like, fine with his feet. He's not great with his feet, but he's fine. I think he's an average to replacement level shot stopper. I think Poole's camp's a better shot stopper. But neither are as good at stopping shots and making those huge saves like mm-hmm. Tim Milia. I mean, he's he's slowing down a lot, but, you know, Milia has been elite. For years, he was truly elite in his athleticism and his ability to get to the ball. And being able to play out of the back and having a keeper that can distribute is great. You know, Cody, you're a big Ederson fan, I imagine. Oh, baby. But at the end of the day, I mean, the fact that Tim can get down and keep the ball out of the net I think has saved us a lot of points this year. He has. He hasn't been on the field enough to do it as much as we would like. But, uh, yeah, he's coming on big when we needed him. we got to talk about Johnny Russell. Go back to Tim for a second, though. Remember early in the game, he got rocked Mm. when he came out to to punch out that ball. Wait, I'm sorry. I think you mean he rocked two people. He did the rocking. He he took some of the... He got rocked also, man. (laughs) By himself, he though. rocked himself. He, no. Then he do- he destroyed Danny Rosero yeah. in the process. Also, knocked himself loopy. Yeah, that was that wasn't his best moment there either. I was gonna let that one go because he had because he had a good but, game otherwise. But in a way, it is one of his best moments because he made the save. He punched the ball out, and he was incredibly brave, as Peter likes to point out for those sorts of things, because he threw his body on the line, his face, his head, his tongue, and a little blood. So. He did have a little bloody lip there, didn't he? Good shout, good shout. Uh, Johnny Russell got the goal, uh, got the red card. I do want to talk about the red card. David, you were not happy about that call at all. No. I think Chris Penso sucks. <laughs> he's terrible. I think he's... On that we I can agree. He's just straight trash. So Johnny's quote from the end of the game I think was interesting. Um, he said, you'd have to ask the referee because he's clearly convinced himself it's a red card. I don't think it's a red card. I don't even think it's a foul. The referee sees it. The linesman sees it. He's saying it's good. Then he goes to look at it for whatever reason. It's not forceful. It's not malicious. You can ask any player in the league if I'm malicious, if I'm a malicious player and the answer is going to be a resounding no. I'm very, very rarely in trouble. I never try and hurt any opponent. So for Penso to come over to me and tell me it's malicious that I've tried to endanger a player, I think it's an absolute shambles of a decision, to be honest. For me, it's not a red. And I kind of have to agree. You know, Penso's justification for it to the pool was Johnny, you know, went studs high on a planted leg. But that kind of ignores the fact that Johnny slid in, won the ball, and the ball kind of bounced Johnny's foot up. Johnny didn't go over the ball. He didn't, like, jump in and go over the ball and then spike somebody. The ball moved and bounced Johnny up. That's, and that, the that's linesman my, was right there and didn't find it to be a foul. That, that's and Penso my, didn't think it was a foul. That's my big thing. It wasn't called a foul at the time. And, yeah, the ball took every ounce of the force of the tackle. He, It was one of those he knew he was going to get the ball, and so, like, that's why he was going in there so forcefully. He, it wasn't, he obviously was not trying to injure the guy. It wasn't trying to be a malicious play. It was, I've been in that situation in sports. Like sometimes there's just a split moment. You like know that you can get it. You go in hard. And he did. He got the ball like so perfectly that his foot stayed on the ball and it just kind of rolls over. And that's something I've seen happen. And I've also seen it called a red card when that happens. And I think the bottom line is just that the guy was laying on the ground. I think he was making the most of it. Like I said, I think the brute of the tackle was on the ball and yes, his foot rolls over it, and his cleats are up, and his cleats get him. But I, I think that guy was making a meal of it, and that's why the red card was given. I, I don't think anyone is losing their mind. I don't think anyone is that mad today if that's not a red card, if they just give him a yellow there. And so I, I don't know. I go back and I go back and forth on it. Yes, it's a call that annoys me. Of course, Penso made it because he doesn't like us. But at the same time, like you can see it, like. I I've seen that call a red card most of the time when the ball when the foot goes over the ball. 
whether they get the ball first or not, it go, he it, he went over the ball and and got the guy's leg. So like I can see the whole argument there, but it is just it's a really frustrating thing because it was such a good strong tackle and just kind of unlucky on Johnny's part. But it's also inconsistent from Penso because oh okay, here's your pop quiz: what other match this year of Sporting KC's has Penso refereed? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, that's fat. very excited. St. Louis. Exactly. Sporting in St. Louis. In a match where Logan and Denbe had his leg damn near broken. Yeah. And had to leave the leave the field, had to had to leave the game. And Penso didn't find that to be a foul at all. That was a goal kick, right? On on what should have been a clear red. Uh when when Bloom, Blom, whatever his name is, also tried to murder Gaddy Kinda. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's just inconsistent from Penso. Also, Thad. Throw okay, it to go. Thad quickly before he loses it. I've, I have, I have heard through a rumored grapevine that MLS and Pro apologized to Sporting for that call not being made on Indembe in St. Louis. Wow, have we and, never talked and, about that? And I think, uh, if you look, Penso did not have any referee jobs for a little time right. after that. I don't remember how long. And and. Pinso, Chris Pinso is probably the third best referee in his house because his wife is number one and they probably have a dog. So I'm going with the dog for number two. <laughs> I knew that that one, he, I saw he had a list and I knew that that one was coming. I saw <laughs> the joke about his wife being a better ref. <laughs> well, she is. That I love that. That was the most excited I think I have ever seen you on this show. And it came out as like a whisper. He was so excited that he, he kind of had to whisper the, the news that he was giving. <laughs> You're okay. gonna make me feel bad. I'm gonna go back to being oh, monotone. Oh, no, well, well done. I liked that very much. Uh, okay, so we can we can stay on Penso here for a second. Vermees also getting in on the action, got himself a yellow card, and we've got some audio here uh, from after the game. Thad asked him about the yellow card, and you could t- it was one of those that he was just like waiting. He was he was just waiting for the opportunity to go he off on the. Be asked. <laughs> It's uh, it's it's longer here than I normally like to do. It's it's about like a minute, but uh, it's it, this is gold from Peter Vermees. It looked like you received the card today. Do you? Have- yeah, I, I can expand on it because I I'll, I was told about ten minutes into the game that I I have too much emotion in the game. Now I've never been told that by anybody in my life, and I'm here to tell you that I will continue with the kind of emotion that I have. This is what I do. I have passion for what I do, and I will not change that. To be told that Get is em. absolutely ridiculous. That's what sports are. If those guys can't figure that out, I, they're in the wrong business. Because I know what business I'm Ooh. in. I'm in the right business. I have passion for what I do. I love what I do. I am not disrespectful. I don't call anybody names or anything like that. Do I yell? Absolutely, I do. I do. And I will, and I will continue that. And the majority of the time, I'm yelling at my team. I'm yelling at my players. I'm trying to push them as much as I can within the confines of the game. I have no idea why I got it, but I bet you it was because I had too much emotion. Uh, and by the way, that doesn't exist in in the seven cautionable offenses, by the way. So, real quick, not to not to pick nits, but when when Vermees says he doesn't call names, um, if you watch the broadcast, right after Vermees <laughs> is carded, um, you can do a lip reading, and if you're bad at it, you, he says many things. And if you are good at it, for me says, uh, and I believe the quote is, assholes. Fucking asshole. <laughs> and then says, and he shakes his head and he goes, you fucking dick. What? Oh, is that what that second word was? I thought it yes. was, uh, okay, okay. I thought it, it was, was a, a little I, word in proportion to the, never mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's tough to disagree. Penso is in fact an asshole. He is. He is. We've got some audio from uh, Benny Fellhaber, who also got a yellow card this weekend. We're going to get to that one later. Uh, yeah. w- later when we talk about SKC too. The season's over for them, by the way. Uh, so let's get back to this game. Two guys who I thought had a had a good game that often or lately have been getting a lot of heat. We'll start with with Logan and Denbe. The Cavs had a pretty good game. That actually, before we start on that, where's where's Leibold? When is he coming back? He's available. He was just uh, he. There's several players actually had illnesses this week. Yeah. So some of them didn't have uh, couldn't play. They didn't want to risk him, and he was one still recovering from it. 
COVID's going around. Do they get COVID? I don't think so because they didn't list them as under that condition. Like uh, whatever they called it, I forget now, but they didn't list them as that way. Do you guys know Health someone in the last two weeks that have had it? Because I swear like it's it's going around like crazy. Can't believe we're still doing this. Anyway, uh, Logan and Denbe. Oh, I have some numbers from Logan and Denbe. Had the most tackles of anyone in the game with five. He was five for five on tackles. Won the most duels with eight. He was six for seven on long balls. Uh, one cross he had, beautiful cross right on the foot of Daniel Shallowy at the penalty spot who who turned and shot just wide. Really good game from Logan because the I'm, I'm putting at least one of those goals in Nashville on him where he just turned around and was not marking anyone and gave up a free header. But it was good to see him come back, Thad. Was he maybe in the top three rated people on foot mob? He was. I think he was the second highest, like just below Jake at eight. He had an eight rating. Tied with Bartlow from. Um, yeah, Bartlow had was in, in the one I'm looking at. He was Bartlow was second and Logan was third. But yeah, close. And uh, let's go to Kyrie Shelton too. Kyrie Loki had a good game, right? D- David, what do you think of that? Had a good game. High key. High wow. Key. Praise. For, there we go, David. Go for it. Kyrie, Kyrie played a very, very strong game. Kyrie w- was active. He was dangerous. He was jumping passing lanes. Um, you know, Houston dominated the ball and had a lot of possession in and around Sporting's area. And uh, Kyrie was the release valve a lot of the time, um, especially after Johnny went off. He had a great run, and I can't remember who played the ball over the top to him. I think it was Radoya. Somebody played like a long ball over the top that Kyrie took down really nicely with a nice piece of skill, mm-hmm. and then one timed. Um, and the the Houston keeper made a great save. That was not Kyrie being Kyrie. That was a very good, you know, one time shot from Kyrie, and and Clark made a great save. But that was a that was a terrific run. Kyrie was involved in the build up to that. Um, was it the second goal? Yeah, it was the second yeah. goal because the first was a PK. Kyrie played really well, and he deserves praise for for having done so. On FootMob, he was the eighth highest person between both teams. We're all about that app this episode. I, well, I'm just, you know, you started it. I'm just going with We're it. We're angling for a sponsorship, perhaps. Thad, what would you think of Kyrie? Uh, I thought he had a really good game last night. Um, I mean, you, you guys have both said it. He was playing really well. He... Was it perfect? No, but again, nobody last night was perfect. But yeah. he he made the runs. He played tough. He defended pretty well. Yeah, it's um, it's not to say that he or Ndenbe didn't have some bad moments. That's kind of what I was touching on at the beginning. It's like everyone did just what they needed to do. But I, yeah, I can remember specific bad moments from both Logan and Kyrie. So if if we got any uh, Kyrie haters like David here that are are annoyed of this, Kyrie definitely did have some bad moments, but you know what? Sometimes I just chalk that up to like, Hey, this is MLS. How great, how great can anyone be? Right? No one's, no one's perfect. Pobody's nerfect. I think every, every player makes mistakes, man. And they, they all, everybody we've mentioned had good games. Now I do want to like throw like the, the flip side to it, right? Houston did rest some players. They weren't their number one strong team. They haven't been the best on the road. So, I mean, that's, there's part of that to it too, but Houston didn't have everybody playing that they would normally play, correct? Because they got a big game coming up on Wednesday? No, but they played, I mean, a largely starting 11. I mean, yeah. Hector Herrera was out there. Um, Quinones, Caicedo, I mean, those guys all play. Corey Baird was on the bench, and I think I don't watch enough of Houston to know if he's their nailed-on starter or not, but um, Brad Smith, Hadebe, those guys are all starters. Um, and we didn't so, have our full starting lineup either, Thad. Houston, but uh, you know, Houston's also had been on an extreme hot run, like hot streak right. since, you know, coming out of League's Cup. So fourth place going into that game, are they there? Still? You know, even rotating a little bit, we were without Polito. I mean, that's a good win. And yeah, then, and I'm, I'm not trying to diminish um, that it was a good win. It's just that everybody always tends to like, oh, any loss is the worst ever, and any win is the greatest ever. And I try to stay a little more in between on those type of things. It was a good win. After a not great result on Wednesday night, 
Nashville had been on a poor streak, like only one win in the, the previous nine games. Yeah, and two draws in there. Uh, Houston and they and they flop against Nashville, and then they do really well against Houston, who's been on a hot streak. And it why makes it, no sense. This team makes no and sense. The third game in a series of three games in a week, all of that comes into play. Nashville was more rested, yes, but it still comes into play that on the third game they do better. It, it, it's just they they're still too inconsistent so they're so inconsistent it's so hard to tell what this team is going to be we talk about how they can beat anyone but they could also literally lose to anyone it, it's like the teams they should beat they lose to the teams they shouldn't beat they win it's i was so i was so pissed off in that nashville game i turned it off i didn't even watch the end of that game i was very upset they didn't look like a team that was trying to fight for their life like they did in this in this win this weekend. Right. They'd showed so many things that they didn't show in Nashville in this game. So that was very good to see. And uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to talk about where we stand now and where Post- where we're going to go, what what games to watch on Wednesday. All right, we're back. Where we stand now. 10th place, Sporting Kansas City are in 10th place. 38 points, one game behind FC Dallas. Uh, There is a game on, well, actually, it is no longer on. I just looked up, and it is in a rain delay. Austin is playing LA. As we record, if they get that win, they will be one point behind us with 37 points. Uh, The key there is Dallas still still has those two games in hand. So while Sporting are off the next two midweek games, everyone else will get those games in hand. Finally. So, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be after that loss in Nashville. That Again, I was just very defeated after that. There's still just one place uh, below that playoff line, Thad. How are you feeling? Oh, man. it's. It, I want to say good. I want to say bad. I, it kind of goes back and forth, but... Like, uh, I was asked this earlier today by somebody, you know, what's your gut feel? My gut feel is they don't make it. I have hope. I have, I have belief that they could, but my gut feel is they don't, and that's only because they keep dropping points when they should get them, and they have to, they have to be perfect going out and still probably get maybe just a little bit of help, and that's they're not they haven't been perfect. So I found Melia's quotes after the Nashville game interesting. He was kind of just put already pushing that game to the side and said multiple times that we need three more wins. Like it was like, it doesn't even matter that we lost that game. We'd already built in two losses. We just need to get three more wins. And so it seems clear that like in training that that's the goal here. So there's four games left. The next one here is against St. Louis. So maybe they're just there. We're eliminating that one as well. They don't even need to win that one as long as they get three more wins. David, can they get three more wins? No, (laughs) no, they can't. No, No, it's not going to happen. But um, yeah, no, the answer is no. No, they're not going to get three more wins. But two more wins might be enough to sneak in. Um, probably not mathematically, but there's three games left in the season. So can they beat yeah, thank you St. For Louis and St. Louis, there. Salt Lake in Salt Lake, and then Minnesota at home? Yeah, I, ha- I had that counter wrong. There is just the three games left, so they've left themselves no no room to spare. Three, three more wins. So, Wait, no, here we go. That's how I got it wrong. He was saying that after the last game. So they've right. already got one after of those. The there we go. So they did build okay. in. I had it right. Thank you. You had it right you and know. wrong at the same time. That's so cozy. I lost my confidence because I just trusted David. Is is sporting good enough to beat St. Louis? Yeah, we already have. Are we good enough to beat St. Louis in St. Louis? That's a tough question to answer. That's going to be really, I mean, challenging salt lake at altitude and salt lake's a playoff team but it's not like they've run away with things salt lake's currently in fifth on 43 points it's a winnable game i mean salt lake has a negative three goal differential on the year same as sporting um so it's not impossible and then minnesota at home we should win so if sporting can pull six points yeah there's a chance but i think it's very likely they're going to lose one of the remaining three yeah, I think they can get two more wins out of this. How about the games on Wednesday? We're looking at the games to watch on Wednesday. There's a whole bunch, every, almost everyone except for us. What games do we watch that night? So there's 
there's only three games that night oh, okay. on the 27th. Again. There's three games on the 27th, and then LAFC is playing T-Grace in the Campiones Cup. But Philadelphia, Dallas, um, obviously it's an East Coast versus uh, Eastern Conference, Western Conference. Everybody should be rooting for Philadelphia. Dallas dropping points there is huge for sporting. Miami, Houston, um, again, should all be rooting for Houston. Houston's in fourth right now on 43 points. Sporting is five back. So, um, I think you mean we should be rooting for Miami. It should be, um, kind of regardless of whether of what whether you think Messi is the second best of all time or or the greatest of all time. But uh, and then Colorado and Vancouver, and we all know what's going to happen. We should be rooting for Vancouver to lose, but we all know Colorado will lose. They've only won four games this year. They are garbage. They're Could always bad. be worse. We could be Colorado. But yeah, so the, I mean, honestly, Dallas, Dallas Philly is a huge one that sporting has, or Dallas has two games in hand on sporting and they're up by one point on us in the standings for that last playoff spot. So drop points there are crucial. The way I'm looking at the rest of the season, I'm trying to just focus on a couple teams that I think are the, that we have the biggest shot at. And to me, I'm just, I'm honing in on Dallas and Minnesota. I know we're already above Minnesota. But and so now that the last one we just need to look at is Dallas. I I think they are capable of dropping those six points in the two games in hand that they have there. Thad, you're making a why face. You, why are you not looking at San Jose? Because they're even on the number of games and three points ahead. So I mean, they could falter easily in Sporting past them or catch up to them, right? Yeah, they. I thought that they were playing better than they are. I guess the since the last I looked, they have lost in. And had a draw as well. So, yeah, they're, well, so they're right there. Next Saturday, there are two six-pointers in the Western Conference in addition to Sporting's game. So Dallas plays Houston at Houston, and San Jose travels to Minnesota. So both of those games are going to be huge for Sporting's playoff chances. And then Salt Lake on Sunday the 1st will be playing LAFC in LA. This used to be a lot easier to figure out when there's only 12 teams in MLS. And this year, it's always like this, but this year in particular, I don't ever remember it being this close or like with this many teams. It is, it's almost everyone outside of three teams in the conference are within it striking is. distance of each other. It's absurd. It is. So I guess the question here that I, I've been toying with is we're putting all this energy and effort in Please just make the playoffs. But is this team good enough to pull off an up an upset in the playoffs? I know we've talked about that they can beat anyone, but they can also lose to anyone. It's just and and we're also talking about them being tired. Vermees had comments about them being tired. Sometimes they look gassed. They looked gassed in the Nashville game. But are we getting our hopes up for no reason here, Thad? What can they actually do something in the playoffs if they get there? Just like we've been saying, man, they're you, you never know what team you're going to get. So, yeah, can they? Yeah. They can play with pretty much any team out there given any day. But they can also just piss the bed and not, you know, put in a poor performance like they did Wednesday. And it could be against it could be against St. Louis, too. How terrible would that be? After all this, we get in there and then just get smacked by St. Louis. Look, you know, sporting his beat just about everybody above the playoff line in the yeah. Western Conference. Yeah. yeah. They beat Seattle. They drew LA and then played a very tight match that they ended up losing against LA. Uh, I think they beat Vancouver and drew Vancouver. They beat Dallas, beat Portland, drew uh, Houston and then beat them, drew Salt Lake and haven't had the return trip yet. They beat San Jose. Sporting is good enough to beat any team if we're playing our best and they're playing their best we are good enough at our best to hang with seattle hang with la hang with um st louis it's just which team shows up and a lot of those games were when Polito was still getting healthy and when Gotti. i mean Gotti's still not even close to being a, a, a 90 minute player but he's getting closer 
Yeah, man. So Gotti, not bad. Gotti always seems to need a few minutes in a game to warm up to it. Like in the first few minutes, his first few touches, he's always like just ha- one half a step slow, but he, he needs to warm up into it. But yeah, if there's another gear that we can unlock for Gotti, that would be that would be incredible. So going back to the four to nothing loss in St. Louis back in May, Sporting Kansas City has played 17 games since then. And they have played them at a 1.65 points per game rate. And if you look around the table for throughout the whole league, that's right up there with all of the best. I think it's really only just not comparable with Cincinnati. So, yes, they can, they can do it. But the frustrating thing with this team, as we've, as we've touched on, is you just absolutely have no idea which team is going to show up. And this was one of those, it seemed like it was set up to steal some points in Nashville, and they lost three to nothing. And then the game where we're playing the, a hot team in fourth place, and we have a late scratch of our star player right before the game, and we go down to 10 men, they pull out all three points. So whatever. I'm just along for this roller coaster ride, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> You know, it, I mean, I, again, we always want teams to win. We want our teams to be greatly successful. But it is what makes this following sport interesting. It, you don't know what's going to happen. And it's, I enjoy this ride and I hate it at the same time. It's emotional. And I'm not going to apologize for being emotional, Thad. And it's not one of the seven cautionable offenses. All right, let's keep it moving here. SKC2, the season, regular season has finished. They've made the playoffs. Let's get to, actually, so they got a win against, uh, a PK win against St. Louis this weekend. During that game, Benny Fellhaber was given a yellow card, much like Peter Vermees was, and uh, we have some audio from that. For the taking there, and so it's emotional. Um, I, I think the ref did okay. I think... It's tough to deal with me when I'm yelling left, right, and center, but I'm going to support my team as much as I can. And, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to do that as much in the playoffs, but he had one yellow card to, to give up there, so I knew I was I was good for one yellow card today. And uh, there was a talk about too much emotion yesterday from another yeah, coach right? in this organization. you think maybe that's what it was? Ah, uh, well, in, in terms of uh, the organization, maybe the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, but... Oh, Benny, what a gem he is. He's, he said, I know it's tough to deal with me. That's incredible. And that was Chad Smith asking that, that last part. Yeah. Well done there, Chad. Uh, so, Thad, tell us what the playoff picture looks like for this as the regular season has finished. Well, it's uh, a little bizarre. It should be completely set now for who's in what spot, but... There is rain delays in Texas, weather delays in Texas for MLS Next Pro and MLS. So Austin is currently playing North Texas, which is actually Dallas's two team. And they're down 3-1. And if the game finishes with Austin losing, Sporting KC2 finishes in third place. And they have uh, the first round of the playoffs is... uh, the teams get to pick their opponent and then the second round they get to pick their opponent. So the higher seeded wow. team gets to pick. So that's supposed to happen this week, like Tuesday, I think is, but they got to finish that game. Uh, but they, it was a good battle against St. Louis today. And technically both times they played them, it ended up in draws and went to PKs. This time they won. Pulse camp made a save in PKs. Big bear. Uh, he's not been great at that. He's pretty good shot stopper normally, but he's not been great in PKs. But he uh, he made one crucial save there, which set him up to be to finish out and get the win there. Okay, I have a question, and then I kind of have a general comment about minor league MLS. The question is, who does Sporting pick? So the Rapids finished first in the Western Conference. Presumably, they'll pick Houston, who finished seventh, and then. Seattle's two team, the Tacoma Defiance, they'll presumably pick San Jose, right? Colorado will not pick. They are they get a bye for the first round. So it's Okay. Two, three, oh. four, five, six, seven. So, so Sporting finish, will pick, presumably pick San Jose. They've played San Jose really well when they played them this year. 
they could pick St. Louis just for the fun of it. Well, that's kind of my question is like, do you call your shot and just say like, we want to send you home as quickly as possible? I don't know. I, that's, I, I kind of tried to ask about that. If they had any thoughts on who they would pick and they were obviously and correctly and smartly not giving any info away on that. But the other, the other thing, my general comment is just how boring all the names are. And I understand that I'm sure there's some marketing aspect to it and everything, but yeah, this league sucks. Colorado Rapids two, Sporting KC two, Austin two, St. Louis two. My ears perked up when you said North Texas earlier. I was like, I was like, oh, you could still do that. Why are we not Small Park Rangers? Yeah, North Texas SC, Real Monarchs, Tacoma Defiance. Does anybody know what Charlotte's Club is called? Oh yeah, Charlotte. Forgot about that. Crown Legacy FC. Oh yeah, I've thick seen that on there. name. Yeah, Crown Legacy FC in MLS Next Pro. Just dumb. Just dumb. What are we doing? Just bring back Swope Park Rangers, please. I'm begging. Man, just call them that, dude. Just call them that yourself. Uh, I I didn't want them to go away from being Swope Park Rangers because I thought it was a cool name. But A, they don't play in Swope Park but a couple games a year now. And B, it was basically Vermees didn't want to try to convince some South American player to come up to Swope Park Rangers with the – they wanted them to come up to Sporting KC too, so that they would think that they would have a chance to go up to Sporting. So, I, you know, I think that's had a lot to play in it. MLX Next Pro. What are we doing? Okay, let's move along. Back to Sporting Kansas City. Before we get out of here, we've got to talk about the rivalry game against St. Louis City FC City FC. <laughs> So we've kind of already touched on it a little bit. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Again, I think this works in our favor that it's a rivalry game there. there at the top. It's kind of, you know, all bets are off for a rivalry game. We're the ones scratching and clawing. They're the ones kind of struggling. They did come back with two second half goals and, and uh, kind of saved us against Minnesota. They got a two to one win over Minnesota this weekend. Thad, Best case scenario here, buddy. Like, be honest. Are they going to come out of this with a result? Probably not. But, I mean, man, I really want them to for every reason possible, you know, for Sporting to get points, for them to take two of the three in the the battle between the two cities. Even getting a draw there would be nice just for that shutting them up a little bit. And I do think they're at least slightly ripe for it because they haven't been playing great. And the pressure's on them now. They, they're they the top team. Yeah, I mean, the pressure's definitely on sporting a little bit because they need they need wins. But, I again, we kind of talked about that earlier. It's almost like they've, they've factored this in. They think they only need two more wins. So maybe they are not feeling the pressure here. Johnny Russell is going to be missed. This is an rivalry game. You need Johnny fucking Russell out there. We need him wearing the armband. And I, he he maybe has not been peak Johnny Russell all season long, but at certain moments, especially at the beginning of this year, when everything was down and Sporting just needed someone, Johnny was putting the team on his back. And I'm I'm very disappointed that we're going to have to do this without him in St. Louis. I do know that Johnny was talking in the locker room about wanting to appeal the decision, mm. uh, the red card. I don't know that they would win. Yeah. It, it's hard to win on that case because we know he did make some contact, even if it wasn't intentional, even if it was light, even if it was the guy made a huge meal of it, he made some contact. So I don't know if they could, I don't think that, I don't know if they'd have any success appealing that, but they could and he could be back. Well, they ought to. Whether or not they can win it, yeah, go for it. Almost doesn't matter. You get a certain number of appeals per year, and since we're at the end of the season, and you know, this is a big enough game that you need him. There's no downside to doing it, so they might as well try. That yeah, did I'm, anyone did anyone ask about Alan Polito? Is he? There's no worry there that he's going to be out for an extended period of time or anything like that. As far as I know, nobody actually asked about it. Uh, Whoops. 
I don't think any. I think if he was going to be out for an extended period of time, we would have heard something. But no, we absolutely would not have heard that. Uh, I don't mean like any official thing. I meant just more on the side. But yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah. So that's what I was asking: is if any, if you had heard any chatter on the side about anything about the injury, but no. I guess not. And it, I did. Nobody asked in the presser because there was really almost no media there again last night. Uh, well, there was no, but it was, there was yeah, nobody, nobody in really the stands asked either. What's that? There was nobody in the stands either. So, no, last night there was. Wednesday night was terrible. Oh yeah. Although it could have been better Saturday night also, but yeah. Okay, so how about we know how St. Louis plays? We know their tricks. Is there anything, David, that you're doing tactically or any subs, any person you're starting to prepare for the way St. Louis plays? So at the beginning of this question, I thought you were asking me what I would be doing to prepare for this, uh, and it involved a voodoo doll (laughs) and um, doing a Lawrence Taylor and sending as much cocaine and as many um, adult sex workers as I could to their hotel room beforehand. uh, And how you emotionally prepare (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Um, it's just like how how should Verme set up the team? Yes, yes. If you like, were coach, yeah, you know, it's tough because Rodoya looks gassed. Um, I think when Rodoya plays well, we're better off with him at the six than than yeah. Remy. But yeah, you know, Rodoya has not had a full a whole lot of nineties in him, and tired Rodoya. I mean, he went in with a pretty ugly late tackle. Uh, before Johnny got his red. Mm-hmm. So he's going to have a week to rest though. So, I mean, it's not like the three games in a row. So it's, he does have a week. And also, sure. as you just said, he hasn't been putting in full 90 minutes. So what's he tired for? I think he's just not up to fitness, but I would start Rodoya at the six. I would start kind of the strongest team possible. Um, yeah, there's I would no- <laughs> start Eric Tommy on the wing, Kinda in the midfield, Remy in the midfield have Felipe prepared to sub in and you know probably you'll probably at some point need to rotate Remy back to the six Felipe into the eight take Rodoya out same starting you know back four back five Melia and Denbe um, Rosero Fontes man of the match Davis man how many times this year we, we could have said that man of the match Jake Davis Oh, did At you guys one. did you guys see somebody had a uh, JFD sign? No. For for Jake F and Davis, there was a JFD sign in the cauldron. I'd like to think that we had a part in uh, spreading that uh, nickname around. I'm just gonna go ahead and claim that we may we helped make that happen, Thad. Yeah, it could be. Um, I want to take a, a a a note from the SKC two team. Benny started the game. Uh, he put his lineup out differently than the traditional sporting 4-3-3. He actually started with a, a five or a three-back line, however you want to say it, three-back line with two wingbacks or five, however you want to say it. And it was uh, fairly effective at smothering the two teams' uh, chances from St. Louis. They they had their chances, and they kind of got a look, little bit of a lucky goal that uh, took a weird bounce and from distance and got past Pulse Camp. But... St. Louis got a lucky goal. No, glad to hear their second team is also getting all of that. Uh, and it was uh, it was also interesting because I don't I should have mentioned this earlier when we were talking about too. But Juan Cazane, formerly sporting player, uh, Ezra Armstrong, and his brother I can't remember his name uh, D Armstrong, who uh, Ezra was within the sporting academy and uh, so played with sporting two for a while or Swo Park actually. Juan Cousin, Juan and, Kumal is in St. Louis. Yeah, he's from St. Louis area. Damn. So he came over here, came up through the academy two team uh, sporting. When they let him go, he went to somewhere in USL and then went to St. Louis City two last year, and with hopes of catching on with the first team and he is still with the two team. He okay. plays pretty good, but Okay, well I don't know how we got back on SKC2 for so long there. Because well, they, because Benny put out a five or three or five back line, however you want to say it. Yeah, and then you just kept going. Them. 
Yeah, I know. Sorry. The the issue though is we don't have a third center back. There's I know no that, third center back to play. That's, <laughs> third, that's to play a three. That's what I was getting to there when I when I was asking you about you know what what would you do how any changes you would make. <laughs> I think other teams are gonna have be afforded some third center back that maybe plays in a different way that is capable that you could maybe throw in there. Sporting Kansas one of City those guys, has. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. One of those guys was Robbie. And if, one of those was Rendov. If Courtney Ford was healthy and we had Rosero, Ford, yeah. and Fontis, that might be really effective, right? Because the the counter to energy drink soccer, when they're going to press as hard as they press and swarm in the midfield, is you want to be able to pass well, but then also to have numbers in the midfield. And so St. Louis typically sets up in a 4-2-3-1. Um, and so you know, they have numbers in the midfield to try it depending on how they want to use their wingers, but they're going to overload and swarm and, and create problems for a midfield th- a trio. And so if we had a third center back, that would be great. But I mean, do you really want to throw out Robbie to play against no. our problematic Brazilian friend or um, mm-hmm. the other six foot nine dude who was just slinging people around like he was the Hulk? That's something we haven't brought up enough in the realm of excuses. Was that That's how we problematic t- Zhao Klaus's grandparent is? <laughs> yeah, we don't mention that enough, and we do mention it. No, the Courtney Ford injury, man, that one really, that one really hurts. Because how many times have, has Vermees wanted to test Fontas and put him on the bench to make a point and to have someone else behind him there to push him? Man, that one, that one really hurts. It hurt for the player. And yeah, it really hurt for the team. Well, if if Courtney Ford doesn't get hurt, do we get Daniel Rosero? Ah, uh, valid point. Maybe not, but maybe because they were looking at him. Yeah. As I think it may have been just that they might have gotten him in the summer window instead of close, like they when they bought him earlier in the season. Yeah, um, I think the summer window is a good point there because if you remember, there was they thought they had it and it was about to fall through like in the last moment he was going to stay with that team yeah and be and definitely because of the Courtney Ford injury they went to Columbia to fix it last minute to make sure they got someone so yeah i do because there's no way they just identified this guy and then got him that fast so they had identified a center back they wanted and and he probably would have been coming in the summer and then you did have uh Robbie there as one who mm-hmm. was sub- should be able to fill in some of that stuff uh, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel it necessarily as bad if you were a three back line with Robbie on the left, Fontas in the middle, and Rosero on the right, as long as you had maybe Leibold out there with Robbie. Now, nah, see, Robbie is just. I, we we were talking about this last week how this team is capable of bad errors, and Robbie just in my head is the last guy that we should put out there against St. Louis because it's just you have to every single time not put the ball wrong and. He's going to do it he, at least. He got the goal twice. tonight against St. Louis, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Go, Robbie. He does. He's, he's got a good shot. We talk about that. He's drilling shots in training. Yeah. It, it did deflect, though. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Robbie, look, I wanted Robbie to play more just because it very clearly wasn't working early in the season, but he, he didn't have it. No. It was a swing and a miss on the U22. And, the team would be well well suited to to try and find a buyer for him and uh, maybe try to replace him with a different U22. I don't know. Vermees does like center backs who are projects, but he has see, he we haven't seen him in forever. So he was catapulted and he seems very far away from the team right now. How old is Abdul Watubaye? Can we bring him back? Oh man, forgot about him. Yeah, I, last I saw, he was in like Macedonia. Wow, but an yeah. all-time name. I I do think that they're also kind of high on the uh, uh, Nassim Mekadish. Uh, hopefully, I'm not butchering that too badly from the two team. Uh, I think he's played pretty well, and he's. I mean, obviously, they can't pull him up right now or anything, but he could be a guy for next year. Okay, so guys, I'm just gonna talk myself into this. I'm gonna get in the right mindset ahead of time. I'm not going to let what happened after the Nashville game happen to me this time. Because, again, remember, they've got a plan. Melia already told it to you, Thad. 
So just don't forget it. They just need two more wins. They needed three. They got one. They need two more wins, which means they don't have to win this game. They don't. So but it would sure fuck help. I'm going to remind myself of the stat that they have since that last, since that first game in St. Louis, that they have 1.65 points per game. They're a good team. They are not going to win every game, but we just need them to get in above the line. And then what? And then, and then anything can happen. Anything can happen, but it's probably not. <laughs> I, there, part of me wants to win against St. Louis as much as I want to get in the playoffs. They're, yes, yeah. Oh, I, do, I feel you there. I feel you. I think a lot of sporting Kansas City fans are with you on that one. But if they get but, into the playoffs, they're going to be one of the hottest teams for a long time, and we'll have every reason to think that they could do some damage. They do. Okay. Final thoughts here, boys. Before we get out of here. Uh, do we have on our show rundown to mention the women's national team? Two players retiring this weekend? Yeah, last appearances from, from two greats. Julie Ertz and Megan Rapino. Julie Ertz one made me sad. David, why are you thumbs downing Women's national soccer team legends. I'm sad that Julie Ertz is retiring. Oh, okay. And I'm just not going to weigh in on <laughs> my thoughts on Megan Rapino. <laughs> we can respect the the body of work that she has done for the team while still acknowledging, like, yeah, time to, time to go there. Please and thank you. I thought she was so goddamn bad in the world cup yeah and i'm she was frustrated that vlatko continually put her in those positions yeah. and it would have just been bad but because he kept putting her in those positions it became almost legacy destroyingly bad <laughs> yes <laughs> almost i said almost i'm not i haven't taken her legacy from her <laughs> but julie Ertz was uh did you did you watch either of the games? I wasn't able to see the game today because I was at Sporting Two. I'll I got it saved so I can look at it later. But uh, it, it was it was very emotional for Julia the that game with Julia Arts because you know, she was crying during the national anthem and yeah, you know they subbed her out at like the it was pretty early like thirty fifth minute or something, uh, probably because she hasn't been practicing. But you know did the you know hug everybody on the way out thing and. She was how much stoppage time was there? I don't know. It's a friendly. That's a lot of hugs. Oh, I was like, I was like, what kind of question is that, David? It's a friendly. It's a friendly game for people retiring. They don't give a crap about that. My wife uh, would be mad at me if I did not mention that Taylor Swift was at the Chiefs game today. Heck yeah! Um, I'm not gonna lie. That one actually made me happy. I know there's gonna be a lot of people that roll their eyes at that. It's just I just she, like Taylor's she and the Travis big, Kelsey are dating. She's like the biggest celebrity in the world yeah. and she's in Kansas City. Like, come on. Come on. What if they get married and she moves to Kansas City and she loves Kansas City and she sings about it in her songs? I mean, come on. It's exciting. Well, it's and exciting. Kelsey's Kelsey's been known to come to a sporting game or two. So yeah. really what I'm saying is that Swift is gonna camp out in Kansas City for the twenty twenty six World Cup. I couldn't care less. Like well, that it's not about you. That's how I. That's how I felt about Taylor Swift throughout all of this. Like genuinely, I just do not care. She's fine. I don't have any, like that positive or negative feelings about her. But I right. like this. I like this a lot. The fact that Travis Kelsey likes her makes me like her more. Oh, it, you two need I, friendship bracelets. I'm, I'm just too contrarian or cynical or whatever word is appropriate here. But I hate it when we go to a sporting game and they make a big deal that Mahomes is in a suite. I don't care to like about the Chiefs game that they make a big deal at Taylor Swift's in a suite. I I'm there to see the team that I want to see play play, not who's watching the damn game. Okay, boomer. No, I was I was on board <laughs> with everyone. <laughs> I was on board with everyone getting mad about all the parade of celebrities around Messi's game and all that. I, I'm with you. I was cynical about all of that. I exactly. Don't, I don't like that either. Now you're a cynical hypocrite. <laughs> well, this was a Chiefs That's okay. game. This wasn't That's a sporting okay. Kansas City game. This was a Chiefs game. And Taylor, Taylor's in our city. The biggest celebrity in the world is in our city, and she's going to fall in love with it because our city is great. 
Biggest celebrity in the world's messy. That's so true. He'll Just be here. in the show. Just in, uh, stop it. In the show. <laughs> Best soccer player of all time, <laughs> David. Now you can end it. It's <laughs> morning. Just been sent off Some part of strong and all Come stop my fun fun things Got me drinking My fun fun things Got me drinking My fun fun things Got me drinking Give me real whiskey When I'm Anything to shake this food